Hello everybody and welcome to this edition of Water Drops. Today we're going to be going over inlets and info drainage. This workflow is going to pertain mostly to transportation designers. We are going to be sizing some roadway inlets and looking at gutter spread, gutter depth, bypass spread, bypass depth. Uh, so again, going to be mostly for anybody doing drainage design for transportation or roadway projects. But everything that we go over, these inlet restrictions, they can also be applied to things like at the upstream end of a stormwater control structure. So it's going to pertain also to any any drainage designer working on a project where you need to add an inlet restriction. This is also for anyone who just wants to take a deeper dive into how inlet analysis is handled in info drainage. We are going to spend a lot of time on these inlets. This is going to be probably a little longer than a typical water drop workflow video, but that's just because we're going to cover any and all things inlet design in info drainage. This workflow is also for drainage designers who are simply tired of using spreadsheets. A typical inlet design workflow might be to export your catchment area parameters to a spreadsheet, then use that spreadsheet to start at one end of the project, size your inlets, calculate the bypass and spread depth, use that information to then move to the next inlet, and so on and so forth. And then once that's done in the spreadsheet, that information and those inlet types are manually translated to a design package like Civil 3D for final plan production. However, if anything changes in that design, if a catchment area was to shift or change in size or change in impervious value, that catchment area will need to be re-inputted back into that spreadsheet and that might cause cascading effects in that spreadsheet, updating everything and then the manual process of getting those inlet types into Civil 3D is needed to be reproduced. Uh, so all in all can be a tedious and iterative process that involves a lot of manual data entry. With Info Drainage, you can run through those inlet sizing calculations in the same place that you're also sizing your catchment areas, you're also sizing your storm drains, you're also sizing your detention ponds and routing your detention ponds. And so having it all in one location really eliminates a lot of any sort of manual data entry. So the workflow that we'll cover, we will first add some inlet restrictions to an info drainage project. We will use HEC 22 calculators to size that inlet and create a template based on that inlet that corresponds to a DOT inlet type. And then we'll demonstrate how to set up bypass connections. I'll also create a template for a standard roadway gutter cross section. And then we'll just talk about a couple different ways that you can export those inlet sizing calculations and parameters to tables that you can use in your stormwater reports. So here I have a standard info drainage subdivision project. I have some CAD data loaded in here as the background information. I have some roadways moving around this subdivision and I have some standard pipes and manholes and sub catchments set up routing to those manholes. Today I'm going to be focusing just on this sort of S5 and S6 area. Uh, and before I go ahead and add an inlet into this manhole, I want to point out that the inlets in info drainage are a subset of parameters that are tied to a manhole. So if I go over here on the right hand side to my junctions, these are the three types of junctions that you can add to an info drainage project and you'll notice that there's not an inlet type associated here. So all that to say the inlets are tied to the manhole and you'll go into the manhole in this inlets tab to add some restrictions to those. So you can see here I do have an inlet associated with this manhole. I have two incoming items going into that inlet. So I have uh, this 1.004, which is just the upstream stormwater pipe here. And then I also have S5DA, so this S5 drainage area, this catchment being routed into that manhole as well. And that all makes sense. 
but let's say I wanted to actually add a HEC22 inlet for the runoff that is going to enter that inlet. So the incoming item would be S5DA. Uh, so I'm going to add another inlet here. I'm going to go ahead and rename it to Street Inlet. And then I'm going to select which incoming item I want to tie to this street inlet. And so now I'll go ahead and point out the different capacity types. So right now I have no restriction set up. So essentially all of the flow running off subcatchment 5's drainage area is freely being allowed to enter this manhole. I can also set up a low flow, high flow bypass rate. I can also set up a flow rating curve. So if I had a specific inlet type that I happen to know the rating curve of, I can build that out here or I could uh, copy and paste from a Excel spreadsheet or CSV format here. But again, today we're going to be focused mostly on these HEC22 inlet types. HEC22 is a drainage design manual published by the Federal Highway Administration and is really sort of the golden standard when it comes to sizing inlets and calculating gutter spread. So I'll go ahead and start filling that out. The gutter parameters are typically going to be defined for you in a drainage design manual or perhaps uh, taken from some of that preliminary design work that you've already done. I'm just going to enter in some standard values here. And so this is, again, just looking at the gutter cross-section. The inlet is going to actually define how big, essentially, the opening is of this inlet. I have the four different main types of inlets set up here. So these are pre-built in so I can select from which type of inlet I want to use. And today I'm going to be basing this inlet off of Florida Department of Transportation's inlet types. So I'm going to be basing this off of a, an F dot type 1 inlet. Now I want to point out a couple of things. So going over to Civil 3D here, FDOT has a very extensive parts list and parts catalog that you can download via their state kit. If I go into, and in this drawing, this is an unassociated drawing, but if I go into the object viewer here, you can see at Florida DOT has put a lot of effort into building out these different part types uh, so that they're represented in their three-dimensional format within Civil 3D. Now, InfoDrainage doesn't have the ability to read this shape and know that, okay, our opening here is seven feet long, our height here is half a foot high, the slope here is this. So we do need to go into the F dot design standards for these type one inlets in order to extract the parameters that are going to be relevant to a hydraulic analysis of this inlet type. So if I go to the FDOT standard plans for curb inlet types one, two, three, and four, I can start to pull out some of that information here. And so back in Info Drainage, to the best of my ability, I'm going to replicate those standards in these inlet parameters. And perhaps this information is more clearly defined somewhere else. But again, just for this demonstration, I'm just using those standards to the best of my ability and replicating what this looks like in Info Drainage. So now I'm going to size these inlets and look at how they are performing hydraulically. So I accessed this size inlet taps just by pressing this button here. You can also access the size inlets option via analysis, or excuse me, via preliminary sizing, size inlets. Uh, but you can see there's not much going on in this screen. Uh, I have this little red warning icon indicating, hey, you need to do something here. You need to input a value here. So I'm going to use an IDF curve that I've added in that rainfall manager. I'm going to select the 25 year event 
and then we'll start taking a look at the performance of this inlet. So based on this 25 year event, based on the catchment area that I have associated in my plan data, so this is reading that S5 DA catchment area and using the plan data, meaning using the area that I have for that sub catchment and calculating a runoff value using the rational method. The rational method is used by all of Info Drainage's design calculators, again, just to get sort of that initial approximation of flow. Now, I want to point out that I do have this option here for dynamic. It is currently grayed out because I have not run a full analysis. However, once I've run a full analysis and I do have dynamic results that I can select from, this will be ungrayed and I can size my inlets actually based on those results. And this is going to be beneficial further downstream in my project if I, for example, have multiple bypass connections also entering into this particular inlet where this plan data is simply looking at a snapshot in time. However, this dynamic results will take into account the upstream effects. But for now, I'm just going to use this plan data for this preliminary sizing. I can see down here the approach flow, the flow that's captured by this inlet, and the bypass flow. I can also see these different spread values, which is another common requirement in terms of roadway design. A lot of times this spread will be limited to half a lane width or eight feet or some sort of value that is predefined in your drainage design manuals. Uh, and then I also have the depth of that flow here. And so if I started to change some of these parameters, let's, let's say for example, my spread requirements were limited to eight feet. I'm seeing that I'm getting nowhere near eight feet here and it might behoove me to use a smaller inlet type. In the FDOT example that we're using, inlet types one, two, three, and four are preferred, so I wouldn't typically be doing this if I were working in that jurisdiction, but for example, let's say I had an inlet type that was only three feet in length, and you can see that information starts to change dynamically as I play with these different parameters here. Um, clogging percentages is something else. So let's say this is going to be 50% clogged. Of course, we can expect a higher spread in that bypass area. I will point out that the gutter spread did not change. This gutter spread does not take into account the inlet opening at all here. And that's because it's just looking at the cross section of this inlet. Let's say, for example, I decreased the road cross slope. I can see that gutter spread be altered here. And so this is a great visual aid. It really helps in terms of training new engineers who might be new to sizing these elements and just being able to visualize those gutter spread and bypass spread parameters and see how those parameters are affected by these inputs here. Um, as you're iterating on these designs, it's useful to have those standards open so that you can be essentially assigning these values to something that actually exists or a certain type of inlet that is constructible and available. And you can also start to just move downstream in your design here. So if I press next, it would take me to my next inlet and so on and so forth. One other quick thing to note, if I were to get rid of a parameter here, so let's say enter in zero for that curb length, my diagram goes away. If you are not seeing anything here, it just means that you're missing a parameter somewhere in your inputs here. Once you populate it, that diagram will be available. So I'm gonna press okay and accept these changes. And so now I have this FDOT type one inlet associated to manhole S5. So now let's say we wanted all of the manholes in this drawing to have F dot type one inlet restrictions. Obviously we don't want to go through and edit each individual manhole, enter in all of these different parameters for those manholes. So we're going to create a template for an FDOT type one inlet. 
So aside from the inlet openings that I've set up here, I also want to assign this template a part family. So up here you can see I have this part family drop down and this is blank. This part family fields can be populated so that when you send this info drainage drawing back to Civil 3D, you can see, okay, this was an f.type1 inlet and then I can map that to the corresponding f.type1 inlet in that parts catalog. Now I'm not going to get into the weeds on this here for the sake of time. We do have a parts family awareness water drop video that you can go watch if you're interested, but to keep it short and sweet, had I started this info drainage drawing in a Civil 3D pipe network, the part family that was used in that Civil 3D pipe network would have been carried over to info drainage and would be populated here. However, because I started this drawing in info drainage, I have no parts families in this info drainage drawing to choose from, so I'm going to go ahead and just set one up for this example. So I'll press OK here. I'll go to build part families. I'm just going to add a junction part family. I'm going to call it f dot type one. Now back in this S5 manhole parameters, I'm going to assign that f dot type one. Now I'm ready to save this as a template and apply it to other manholes. So how to save this as a template? I'm simply going to right click on S5 and press add to templates. S5 has now been added to my toolbox of different junction types I can use in my design. Now I want to rename this to give it a more descriptive name and not just the name of this particular manhole. So how I'll do that, I'll go to file, object templates, we'll go to my junctions, and here is my S5. Now, FDOT has a lot of different types of inlets. There are f.type1 left-facing inlets and f.type1 right-facing inlets in that Civil 3D catalog. Uh, there's obviously also type 2, type 3, type 4, type 5, so on, so forth. So you could start to build those out within this object template file and then save it to an IDTX template file and once you've done that, you can use this across your organization. You can use this in multiple projects. So setting up these templates might take a little bit of time at first in order to get all those parameters in there. However, it is something that only needs to be done once and then you can share this file across your organization where your designers can easily access these different types of manholes. So the reason I came into this uh, object templates file in the first place was to resize this template. So I'm going to give it another name here. And now I have these f.type1 inlets ready to use at my disposal. So now let's look at applying this f.type1 template to all other manholes in my drawing. The quickest way to do that, if I go and right click on my junctions on the left hand side here, and I press select all. If I then right click, I can change template. And there is my F dot type one template being ready to use. Now let's take a look at this S six manhole here. So just downstream from my S five manhole, and we'll look at those parameters. So you can see that part family F dot type one has been applied. If I go to inlets, that street inlet is filled out with the F dot sizes for that type one inlet. But what I do want to point out is that you might have to go through and mess with some of these connections. So what do I want attached to this street inlet? I want the sub catchment attached to here. And I want the pipe 1.005 to be able to go in freely. I do have this extra inlet here. What is going to happen if I try to run a full analysis is I'm going to get a warning that I have an unattached inlet. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete this here, but just know that that also gets caught in the validation process and you'll be alerted to that. 
You also have the option from within that validate menu to delete all unconnected inlets so you can batch remove those in one step. Now that all being said, in order to not mess around with those unconnected inlets, it's probably going to be the best workflow to have those templates set up before you lay out your design. So rather than batch editing those and applying a template, obviously in an ideal workflow, you might have that template file already set up so that when I was laying this out originally, I could set them up as these f.type1 inlets to get started, but it's definitely possible to batch edit them. Uh, it's just a recommendation. Of course, it's gonna be more seamless if you don't have to swap out those templates, but it is definitely an option. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is set up a bypass connection from S5 to S6 to model that roadway gutter. So in S5, if I go to inlets, I can see that currently the bypass connection is set to none for my street inlet. Now setting up a bypass destination or a bypass connection is going to be different than adding a new connection type. So what I'm going to do is actually right click on the manhole and then go to add bypass connection. Here I'm prompted to select what type of connection I want that bypass connection to be. I have already saved a template called roadway gutter that represents a standard gutter cross section. Again, this is done by simply just editing those parameters, right clicking on the element once it's built, and then pressing add to templates, and then going into file, object templates, and renaming that, tweaking parameters if necessary, just like we did for the f.type1 inlet template. So I'll select on roadway gutter, and then this radial menu pops up. So here, what I'm being asked is, do I want this bypass to be connected to a new inlet? Do I want this bypass connection to be associated with my street inlet? Or do I want my bypass connection to be associated with inlet? I want it to be associated to that street inlet. So anything that is not entering that street inlet based on those restrictions we set up using the HEC 22 calculators, that flow will be then applied into this roadway gutter. So I'll select that and then attach it to S6 here. And again, we're asked, all right, is this going to be a new inlet? Do I want it to be associated with the inlet, which if you can recall, was just the inlet associated with the end of pipe 1.005, or do I want that to go to the street inlet? And so I want this to go to the street inlet because I want this flow, this bypass flow to be applied there as well. Again, we're mod modeling that gutter system. And so here I have that roadway gutter. Uh, if I go into the roadway gutter here, we can look at those parameters that I had saved. So you can see this is a triangular channel that is one feet high with a 0 0.02 uh, side slope. And so that's just how you can set up a standard cross section. I used a triangular channel here, but of course I could have selected a custom cross section or a trapezoidal channel um, and this roadway gutter is in my object template. So if I go here, object templates, go to my connection, there's my roadway gutter. And now if I also go into S5 here, go to inlets, I can see that my bypass destination is that roadway gutter, just giving us an indication that whatever doesn't make it into this inlet will be applied to this roadway gutter. So let's go ahead and take a look at some ways that we can export the HEC 22 calculations to an Excel format. So the first one's going to be, if I go into preliminary sizing and size inlets, if I press this button here, export HEC 22 results to Excel, you'll just give that a file name. I've already exported this earlier when I only had a couple inlets in there, uh, but you can see that all of the HEC 22 results have been exported to Excel for further customization, and so that you can get this into a format that is accepted by your jurisdiction. Another way that I wanna point out is via the print option here. So if I go to File, Print, I'm then greeted with this window where I can select from essentially any sort of parameter that I have in this info drainage drawing. So this is a very comprehensive list and location where 
I can really start to customize and export exactly what I want to and not to what I don't need to. For this example, I just have the junction selected here, making sure to have inlets checked. And once this report has been generated, if I scroll down to inlets, I can see all of the details associated with these manholes. So there's the junction name, here are the gutter details, here's those curb details, here's the incoming item, and these are all the same because I, again, I was using that FDOT type one template, uh, but it's just another way that you can get a very comprehensive export of all of this information. Uh, I can print this directly to a PDF here, I can also save this to an Excel format or a CSV format for further customization outside of Info Drainage. Another location, and just one more location where this information is held is if I go to Build and then to Tables. I can view that information in the junctions tab here. So I have junctions. I've made sure to go down and have uh, my inlets selected here. And so I can expand this table uh, and really start to grill down into these HEC 22 parameters. So this is just one other location where that information is. This also can be exported to Excel or a CSV format. And so that's all for this video. I appreciate your time as this was a little bit long for a traditional water drop video, but we did cover a lot. We looked at how you can size those inlets based on HEC 22 methodology within Info Drainage. We can run those hydraulic analyses and design those bypass links all in one location. And we also looked at a relatively deep dive into object templates, how you can save those templates for example, templates that are associated with DOT inlet types, how you can batch replace objects in info drainage with those templates, how to make sure that your inlets are performing correctly and you have the right inputs associated with those inlets. And we also talked a little bit about part family awareness in info drainage. Again, we have a separate workflow video that takes a much deeper dive into that, so I highly recommend checking that out, but we did associate an FDOT type 1 part family that can then be read upon importing this info drainage drawing back to a civil 3D drawing so that you know which part to map this item to based on those custom parts catalogs.